Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Payam. All right, thanks for watching. And look at my cool new shirt and my cool new hoodie. <laughs> Courtesy black pen, red pen. Woo! <laughs> Woo! So this question that I'll do today comes fresh out of the common final for math <laughs> at UCI. It killed a lot of students, but it made me super excited because it gave me an inspiration for a new YouTube video. So what's the question? The question is, suppose your function from 0, 1 to 0, 1, and by the way, nothing special about those intervals, that is continuous, and moreover, f of 0 equals to 0, f of 1 equals to 1, integral from 0 to 1, f of x dx is 1 third, and f is invertible which means it's one to one and on to, and it has an inverse. And the question is, what is the value of the integral from zero to one of f inverse of y dy? Oh my God, I know, right? The students were not happy about this, but it's still a really, really neat question because it turns out there are actually two ways of doing it. And let me first give you the geometric method of doing it. So method one, I like to, to call it the Nike method because just do it. Namely, let's draw a picture of such a function. So we know that f of zero equals to zero, f of one equals to one, something like that. And it's invertible, which means it always passes the horizontal line test. And in fact, in another video, I show you that an invertible function from 0, 0 to 1, 1, it's either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing, which in this case must be strictly increasing. And the reason is, uh, if, it's, if it's not strictly increasing, then at some point it goes up and it goes down. And in that case, it wouldn't pass the horizontal line test. That's why in this case, it's strictly increasing. And moreover, what do we know? We know that the integral from zero to one of f is one third. So we know this area is one third. And now the question is, what is the integral from 0 to 1 of f inverse of y dy? And here's a cool thing. This graph, right, is y equals to f of x. So in particular, because f is invertible, we can solve for x, and we get x is f inverse of y. So if you actually tilt your head, and the cool thing is, if you tilt your head, you can see what's on this shirt. Um, it's <laughs> integral. Well, I'm turning the camera too. <laughs> yeah, sure. See? If but you tilt your head, you no, can no, see... No, no, you stand, stand straight. Oh. Stand straight. Yeah. There we go. Okay. I think it's a hard You see I this? And moreover, if you tilt your head, <laughs> notice this is not the graph of f, but in terms of y, this is the graph of f inverse of y. And so the question then becomes, what is the area under the graph of f inverse of y from 0 to 1? Well, it's this area. And notice that area in red is precisely the area of the square minus the green area. And therefore, what would be our answer? Our answer would be the area of that square, which is 1 minus the green area, which is one-third, and that becomes two-thirds. Whoa! So in other words, all we had to do is just think about a certain area differently, in this case, geometrically. Okay, what if you like, I hate geometry, I'm team algebra, well, I have some good news for you. There's also an algebraic way of doing it, using a clever U substitution. You have another board, man. Oh, I do. Well, it's already, damage has already been done. So, <laughs> method two. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> That's why I like my new camera, man. <laughs> Gives me good advice. So, we want to calculate the integral from 0 to 1 of f inverse of y dy. Well, y is f of x. So let's just use a u sub y equals to f of x. So u sub. Then first of all, uh, dy equals to f prime of x dx. And we want to substitute the endpoints. And very important, here you substitute y as our endpoints. So we, on the one hand, we get 0 equals to f of x. And it's weird, and because you're sort of defining x in terms of y, so y is your starting variable, x is the thing you want to find. So 0 equals to f of x. And let's look at this graph. When is f of x 0? Precisely at 0. And the mathematical reason is f of 0 is f of 0, but because f is 1 to 1, this implies that 0 equals to x. Which means our new bottom point will be 0, and same spiel with 1. So f of 1 equals to 1, and we want this to be f of x, and therefore x equals to 1. So what are we left with? We're left with, again, sorry for erasing, okay. I thought that's all the space we would need, but no. Then we just use the, the thing with uh, you know, u sub, so 0 to 1 of f inverse of y dy. Let's see, our new endpoints become 0 and 1. And then f inverse, y is f of x, so f inverse of f of x, times dy, which becomes f prime of x dx. But here's the cool thing, f inverse of f is just x. So we're left with integral from 0 to 1 of x, f prime of x dx. And now what do we use here? Well, we have a product and a derivative, so it's time to integrate by parts. And for this, you use u equals to x, dv is f prime of x, du is 1, and v is f of x, and you do the zigzag motion, and we get x f of x from 0 to 1, minus integral of 1 times f of x, so from 0 to 1 of f of x dx, and that becomes 1 f of 1, which is f of 1, minus 0 f of 0, which is just 0, minus integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx. And remember, 1 f of 1 is 1, and that integral by assumption was 1 third. So interestingly, we get the same thing as before, the area of the square minus the integral area under the function, and we get the same answer as before, 2 thirds. Yay! Yay! All right, and if you like that and want to see more math and more calculus, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Woohoo! Woo Oops.